Hey guys, Brendan Odin Productions here. I've got my coffee. You've got your brains. Let's get learning. In this tutorial, I'm going to actually teach you guys how to create an applet that is able to be run on a web page uh, using Java. Now, in order for this to work, you will actually need an applet. So in order to create an applet, all you need to do is have a class that actually extends applet in Java. Now, what we're going to do is, if you've played any sort of online game, I think that RuneScape used to run on Java. I don't, I don't remember. But a lot of online games are actually running on Java. So if you actually open up an online game, well, not like online game, but like little games um, that seem like Flash games, I guess, um, you'll actually open up and they'll have the Java loading symbol. Anything that you see that's like that is actually a Java applet. So what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is turning our pre-existing applet, our snake game that we've been working on, and we're actually going to uh, upload it to the web so you can access it with a web browser. Now this is actually extremely simple to do. There are just a few things that we need to check first. The number one thing that you actually need to check is make sure that the main class that you're running every time you run the application extends applet, which in this case it is. The second thing you need to do is make sure that all resources are imported into your project. So in our snake project here, we have one image and this image is imported into our project. You can import things by right clicking on your project and pressing import. However, you can tell that this image is already imported because it's listed in this eclipse tree. The third thing that you need to make sure you do is all your classes need to be free of errors and warnings in order for your applet to work properly. So as you can see here, we actually have a snake applet and a snake canvas class, and both of them have warnings in them. So we can go ahead and clear those by simply double clicking on the applet, and both of these are uh, serial version IDs. So we're just going to go ahead and let Eclipse add a generated serial version ID for both of these classes. Um, and then once we do that, we're going to save the classes, and then you'll be able to tell that they're both free of warning. So let's go ahead and get started right away with the export. So in order to actually export your um, class into a applet that is ordered to... Oh my gosh, I said that terribly. I'm sorry. In order to actually export your project um, onto a web page, the first thing you need to do is combine all of the project and its resources into an archive. Now this archive is very similar to a 7-zip archive, a WinRAR archive, or a zip archive, except this is a .jar file. Now you've probably heard of jar files if you play Minecraft, because I believe that the Minecraft executable is actually a .jar file. However, that is a runnable jar. What we're going to be creating today is a jar that's simply an archive that cannot be run. So let's go ahead and jump right into the creation of this archive. We can do this by right-clicking on our project, in this case it's called Snake Tutorial, and pressing the Export button. And then we have the option of exporting several different things. Now, what we want to export is actually a jar file under the Java category. So we can select jar file and then press Next. And then we have all of these various options that we need to go through. Now the first thing we need to do is make sure that our project is checked. So this is snake tutorial that's checked, and then make sure .classpath and .project are also checked. And then the next thing you need to do is make sure that export generated class files and resources is also checked. This will make it so the class files and resources are exported. This actually makes your jar file work properly. You do not need to have the following three items checked. Export all out output folders, export Java source, and export refactorings. Now export Java source is nice if you want to hand the applet to a friend and you want the source code to be included. So it, it will actually package the source code in your archive, but um, we don't want to do that for security purposes. Yes. <laughs> um, then the next thing you need to do is actually choose your export destination. So I already have one chosen. It's a folder on my desktop called snake applet dot, or a s there's a folder on my my desktop called snake tutorial and then we went ahead and just named the file snake applet dot jar now I actually have a previous file there um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that and then press the save button here now we can we are going to go ahead and compress the context add directory entries and overwrite existing files that's only really useful if you're overwriting the file which we would have done if I didn't delete it but we're just gonna go ahead and keep all this checked now on the next screen, um, we can go ahead and have we have the option of exporting class files with warnings and errors. 
Um, before we cleared the warnings, this option would have been useful. However, we cleared all the warnings, so these these options aren't really necessary to be checked, but we'll leave them checked just in case. You also have the option of saving a description of this jar in the workspace. We're going to not do that. Uh, then we have the option of generating a manifest file or using an existing manifest file. We're going to go ahead and generate a manifest file. Um, all a manifest file does is it contains a little bit of information about the project. Um, so we're just going to generate a new one. And we're not actually going to seal anything because we don't need to. Now, selecting the class of application entry point, that is if you're using a runnable jar, then you need to actually select the class that contains the information that will be run. However, since we're just using an archive that's going to be run in a web browser, we can let our web browser handle that. So now if we press finish, um, it looks like nothing happened. However, our .jar file should be uh, in the folder that we declared. So now if we minimize this and go ahead and jump back to our desktop, we can go ahead and open the snake tutorial uh, folder here. And as you can see, our snake applet dot jar is actually in our folder. It has actually successfully exported. So now that we have a dot jar file, as I said before, if we try to run this, nothing happens. Um, if we press the open button, nothing happens. However, if you actually embed this Java archive into a web page, it will run. So, the first thing we need to do is we actually need to create a web page. Now, I actually had a web page in here previously, and as you probably saw, I deleted it. But this can be done by right-clicking and pressing New, and then we can actually press Text Document. And then we're just going to name the text document page.html, and this will also change the extension. Um, you can also open up Notepad and simply press Save As. And then what we want to do is we actually want to right-click on the page, and then I'm just going to go ahead and edit with, with Notepad++. You can go ahead and edit it with your favorite text editor, whether it be um, Sublime Text, Notepad, whatever. So, in order to actually put our archive onto this web page, we need to create a basic HTML structure. This can be done by using the standard HTML tags that almost all web pages use. So if you don't know what this means, just go ahead and copy what I'm doing. First thing we need to do is create a pair of HTML tags we also need to create a pair of head tags and a pair of body tags. Now inside of our head tags, we're actually going to create a title tag that's going to contain the title snake tutorial applet. And inside of our body tags, this is where we're actually going to put the applet's information. So the applet can be inserted into a web page by using the applet tag. Extremely simple. So we're just going to go ahead and type applet, and then there's a few parameters that we actually need to send into this applet tag. The first parameter is the code parameter. So we just say code equals, and then inside of quotation marks, we put the class of where the code is. So if we go back to Eclipse, you'll see that the main part of our applet, the part that actually runs, is called snake applet. So what we want to do for our code is put snake applet dot class. Now, what you might be wondering is here in Eclipse, it says that it's actually snakeapplet.java. However, .java files just contain all of the source code. And when we actually exported our archive, we actually exported it into a .class file. This can be seen by actually opening the archive with your favorite archive editor. I'm going to use 7-zip. And if we actually open the archive, you can see that we have um, the three classes here, but they're dot .class files. Snake Canvas, Snake Applet, and Direction.class. This is also a good way to check to see if your archive exported uh, successfully because we have our three class and then our image inside of our archive here. So now if we just go back to Notepad++ and we go ahead and end the code tag, or the code parameter rather, we can go ahead and insert the next parameter, which is the archive parameter. Now the archive parameter is simply the .jar file that it's going to be reading from. So ours is called snakeapplet.jar. So we're just going to say snakeapplet.jar. Now keep in mind that this archive parameter actually needs to have a location or a path to where the .jar file is. So if the .jar file is actually in a subdirectory, well then you actually need to declare that subdirectory using like slashes like so. However, we don't have any subdirectories, so we can just go ahead and say that our app archive is snakeapplet.jar. Now the next thing we need to do is actually declare the width and the height. So our width is going to be uh, 640 and our height is going to be 480. 
And now I can go ahead and actually save the web page. Now once the web page is actually successfully saved, we can go ahead and simply double click on the web page to open it in a web browser. Now the only problem with Java now, uh, this never used to be the case, but the problem with Java now is if you actually try to open your page, you can see first of all that it actually tries to load the Java applet that we have. However, there is an error, and that's because our security settings have blocked a local, local application for running. Now, I'm pretty sure I have not saved my Java, or I have not altered my Java security settings, so I'm pretty sure that this is by default blocking local applications. Now, this is to prevent a certain Java loophole that was exposed a few months ago that actually allowed users to gain access to the computer by running a local Java application. So in order to bypass this, you have a few options. One, you can edit your Java security settings to allow local applications from running. However, that's not recommended because if they actually put a security setting in there by default, it's probably for a reason. The second way you can bypass this is actually by uploading your file to a file server. Now, any FTP file server that allows .jar files will work. So I'm just going to go ahead and upload the um, file to my file server using FileZilla. Now, it's actually open on my other monitor so you can't see it but I'm just gonna go ahead and do that so I've actually just uploaded the project to a file server now if you don't have a file server you're gonna have to change your Java security settings however if you do just go ahead and upload it and then you can access it remotely from the web so now we can go ahead and test out our page by simply going to my remote file server and the file is located at brandonsoft.com slash personal projects uh, slash snake tutorial slash snake tutorial slash page.html now if you actually delete the page.html and view the directory you can see that in the fi er, in the um, directory online we have the page.html file and then we have the snake applet.jar file now if we open page.html which is the html page we created you can see that we actually have our applet here with the menu and all now we can actually press enter and then we can actually start playing the game. Why it is giving me this this problem, I don't know. But that's a problem with my snake game, not with the applet that we've actually created. So thanks for watching this tutorial on how to actually upload an applet to the web. Hopefully this helped you. Uh, if you have any problems, feel free to leave a comment. But please also remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching. Peace.